Tell me some of the places you've been. Right? Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> you've been everywhere. Oh, did I have a map? Take all night right I here. I have a map, yeah. I have a map, it, well, that's okay. The, the black purse, I think, I don't know if I brought it. The big one? The yeah. Big one. Sorry. <laughs> Let me see if I have it. But I, I don't know if I did because I didn't update it. <laughs> so, I think I've been to like 35 countries now or something. So my mom, my mom's from Thailand, so I've been in Thailand growing up like every four or five years. And then I went to Mexico, that was the next country in college for an alternative spring break, so it was like a service trip to the Cancun area. And then I went to Canada, <laughs> I went camping there once. And then I went to the Olympics, so in 2012 in London to watch it. I you were there? Yeah, I went to London. So I have, my cousin lives in Oxford, he's a Baptist minister out there. <laughs> and, uh, so you have ends for places. Yeah, yeah. And then the more you travel, the more you have people in more places, so then it just become, becomes easier and easier. So, yeah, so my, my cousin lives in Oxford, so I stayed with him. I used Miles to fly there, so that was like my grad school graduation present for my parents. They gave me Miles to fly to London for that and then the train it's like a two hour train ride to Belgium or Paris from London so I went to both with my my one of my girlfriends that was in my ward before she came with me so we just took the train stopped in Belgium so Brussels and Bruges and Paris and then went back to London um, and then after that I just kind of got on a roll <laughs> like, that's when I started doing the travel or reading the travel blogs so I think my first trip um, I had a friend, Alicia, she was doing an internship in the Virgin Islands, and she kept saying, you travel, like, come visit me, come visit me, but it's like five or six hundred dollars out of Salt Lake. I just woke up one morning, and it was 140 round trip from Salt Lake to St. Thomas, round trip, yeah, wow. like, wow. total. That's with tax? Yeah, yeah. So basically a free flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so when you find something like that, are there a lot of limitations on it, like for two days? Or no. So. So that's the thing, airlines, there are no rules. That's the number one question I get asked. It's like, how long will this last? And like, like, what are the dates that I have to fly on? Like nine times out of 10, there are no stipulations. Like it's just kind of arbitrary because the airlines uh, will just, sometimes they'll offer like their entire routing on sale. Like any flight between Salt Lake and St. Thomas would be cheap. But sometimes they'd only offer like 20 seats on this flight and this flight and this flight. But you never know because mm -hmm. it just all you see is what's on their website and you can't tell so it's really arbitrary sometimes it'll last that one to st thomas lasted about two hours <laughs> so i got one other friend to book a ticket with me and then everyone else didn't make it in time <laughs> that's frustrating yeah so i have a couple questions about yeah. that so um like you posted some good deals uh, mm -hmm. that i was interested in one was brazil and the other one was to um vietnam mm -hmm. but so a couple questions about it one i you need a visa for those countries. So how do you manage okay. that? Do you just have like standing visas to all the countries in the world? Like, can you do that? But yeah. like, but because like usually when you need a visa, you have to tell them when you're coming, mm -hmm. and like, and then it takes a couple months to get it. You yeah, know what I mean? So, and so like, like mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I could book it with because I didn't have a visa. I have a passport, but right. so the Brazil visa process. Well, any visas. Uh, the first thing I do if I'm thinking of going somewhere, I'll check on the State Department website. It's travel.state.gov, mm -hmm. and you they have they have a little section saying like where are you traveling to. You type in the country, and it pulls up a sheet that says here are the like the shots you need to get if there are any. Here are the risks that there are that are involved with this going to this region, and then these are the visas. Like it has very specific information what you need to know before you go. Uh, where the embassy is and things like that but there's a section on visas and it tells you whether or not you'll need a visa or sometimes you don't need a visa ahead of time they just stamp your passport when you get there but like south africa if you don't have two empty pages in your passport they will deport you they'll like send For you real? back yeah so you just just read that website how many pages does the passport have um so right now the standard is like 27 pages or oh, something like that it's not <laughs> it's not very big but you could like opt into the 50 53 or 58 page one i don't know what the number is okay. exactly just but at the end of this year if you renew it in 2016 everyone will just get the big the big oh, passport from now on from now standard. on yeah oh, and okay. you can't add pages so if you run out of pages you have to get a new one <laughs> 
Oh, but okay. but so again, like yeah. if I wanted to go to Brazil, and that's yeah. why I bought that ticket. Right. Then so, so so you would check the secret check, website and it says, and it'll wait, tell it, you it, check it, the, I need check, a visa. Yeah. So but check the embassy. And so for Brazil, you have to, I would give it at least a month ahead of time, just because my experience was, um, you had to book a reservation, like to, a, a, an appointment to meet with the Brazil um, embassy. Or I think in Salt Lake. Yeah, in LA. Oh, so so you're it's always... regional, and you have to go for Brazil. You have to go to the one that is assigned to you. So you can't go to the one in San Francisco. You have to go to the one in LA. Like even if you're going to be in Atlanta, you know, in a month, you have to go to the one in LA. Mm -hmm. So you either pay a company to do it for you, which is like 300 bucks, or you just go to LA. Or that you don't have to be there in person, but you have to have the appointment. So what I did, I. I drove down there because it's the same price as paying someone to do it. So I made a weekend out of it. She came with me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I submitted my passport. And they only have like a four-hour window where you can make an appointment to submit it. And there are no walk-ins. So you have to make an appointment to go. <laughs> um, you drop off your information and they check it off. And you have to have everything exactly so, like exactly as they say on the website. And then if they approve that, they'll have it for one week. And then you can pick it up in a week. With, so, so they have to go back to LA. Yeah. So what I did, I dropped it off. I came back after. Because I can only go to countries that don't require <laughs> visas. It sounds like. Well, no. Most most countries don't have that extensive of a process. Brazil is just kind of different with the U.S. So I think it's because a lot of South American countries we require that kind of extensive visa yeah. process, so they the do the same to us. States. And it's just because it's I called a reciprocity visa. I had to pay four hundred dollars for a visa to Russia, and it was still an expedited like process. It was like pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, and it's just because we do it to them, so they do it to us. But uh, but with Brazil, I just had a friend pick it up for me because once but the first you time you had to come, yeah. But then somebody else could pick well, it up. Well, you don't have to come the first time either. Someone can go for you. I could you. mail that to a friend, exactly. and they could take it exactly. for me and then come back. Mm -hmm. for me. So I just paid because I needed to be sure I made this this time and this appointment, and it was on a uh, work day only, so I don't work Friday, so we just left as soon as I got off work Thursday and went straight down there. Um, but uh, yeah, so I went and dropped it off, but my friend picked it up for me and FedEx it back. It was only $6 from LA to Salt Lake to FedEx, and I got it in four days, so. FedEx is pretty safe. I wouldn't use the U.S. So postal service. Are a lot of countries <laughs> like this, where you actually have to go to L.A.? No. So most like of the Like what about US, Vietnam? Like have you right. Been to Vietnam? I haven't. And from what I'm aware, I don't think you need a visa. You need a visa. Most yeah. of our countries that have American passport doesn't need a visa. Yeah, you just go there and they stamp yeah. it. Or you go there and you pay them 20 bucks and then yeah. and then yeah, you like get France it. Yeah, sort of. Just show up. Yeah. yeah. But so but the you EU, have certain days, like you have only have two or three 30 days or like three months. Yeah. Is that all of EU? You just Yes, yeah, the sh well, the Schengen zone. So it's yeah, called okay. the Schengen zone. Are, yeah. You're familiar with that. I think Poland's a part of it. Um, where yeah. if you go to any of these countries, you don't need another stamp. You can travel freely within this region, but you can only spend up to 90 days, yes. I think, in, yeah. in the Schengen That's zone. Right. So after 90 days, I'm not a day more, that. you have to leave. So. so okay, so before I buy a, a ticket, I need to go to this thing the and then see if I want to bother uh -huh. with doing the visa. But, not, but like, how long does the visa last? I so mean, the Brazil visa lasts 10 years, though. Oh, so, so that might be worth it mm -hmm. next time I'm in LA right. to just make an appointment right. around the time that just I want to go to LA yeah. and then just have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And That's so, 10 years. Um, okay. I would I would call them and ask though, because I think you might have to have a ticket booked. Oh, and we're going to have it. Yeah, yeah but, a lot of but, like but they might let you. You can just say, hey, I don't come here for that often, and I just want to get this. Just in case. Yeah. There's a good deal on the ticket. I'd like to go. Yeah. So they might they might do that. They're reasonable though, because I had a friend who, they had two people going, and they were only able to get an appointment for one, and they book out two to three weeks in advance. So not too far, but if you're not. Um, checking into it, you might miss that window, and you're mm -hmm. kind of you're gonna try to rush to sure. get an appointment. I had a, a couple of friends that they um, got one appointment, but not two. So their mother-in-law, they they mailed their passports to their mom, and she took it to the embassy, and she showed up, and she was just like, please, I don't know what she did, but she talked them into <laughs> to doing both of them, and they're like really against it, but they did do both of the visas. <laughs> Oh, and does it does so, it cost quite a bit? Um, so that one's one hundred sixty dollars. Oh. So most South American countries, well, I think about half of them now are one hundred sixty dollars. If they if you do need yeah, a visa. so like Argentina, you need a visa, but all it is 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 a payment because we charge them. They don't want us to go through this this whole like bureaucratic process. They just say you charge us one hundred sixty dollars to go to your country, so we'll charge you one hundred sixty dollars. 
So all you need is, is the receipt. So you, you just do it, so you, the Argentina would actually just go then pay the 160 Um, You pay you online before you go. So you just print out the paper and then they make sure you have that paper. And see, this mm-hmm. your travel that state.gov would tell you that yes. that you actually don't need a visa, yes. but you have to do it online. Website, okay. Yeah. Okay. Usually, so this is so good. helpful because I was yeah. like, I can't just buy a ticket. Was, right. Right. And then not so know even if I can go there. With with the U.S. passport, most countries don't uh, require a visa. They just stamp you there. It's called visa on arrival. Visa on arrival. Uh huh. So, so if I see that, that means, then I know that, that for means, sure I can yeah, buy a ticket just, to that country. Uh huh. And then other countries have a visa on arrival program where they charge you money to enter still, like a tax, but you can just get it there. So when I went to Istanbul, I had a layover there. You just go to this window, you give them 20 US dollars, and they put a sticker in your passport. So always have cash with you then. Uh huh. Yeah, things, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's good to know how much you need That's ahead of time. Do you Very need to have it in there? There, no, currency. they'll take U.S. dollars. So Everywhere that I've been, will take U.S. dollars. All right, so my other question is, again, like when I was interested in the uh, in the Vietnam. So, like you said, $600 to Vietnam or something like that. And I clicked on it, and it wasn't $600. It was like $1,600. So, like, I don't really understand when you, like, posted, like, what I'm supposed to oh, click on okay. and, like, what exactly am so, I supposed to so do? So, what I post are just the blog, the links to the blog posts that... I found that have all the information about about the deals because they have like special algorithms and like software that tells them what dates and stuff are good. So when when you link to the blogs that I pick, it'll tell you, hey, these are mostly like fall dates or these are like June and July dates only, or they'll say, oh, there's only one or two dates throughout the year, but uh-huh. just check. So the blog the blogs that I post are the information about which airlines and when are on sale. And then you have to go to, here, I'll, I'll give you this. So this is what I talked about in my last one. Um, I, these are the blogs that I usually post um, to my, my Facebook page and that I check every day. And then these are, so these are the blogs and these are the um, flight information, like uh, the flight search website. So they're separate. So the blogs tell me where to, uh, like what, where to where's go. on sale and when and what airlines. And then I'll go to like Google Flights, uh, kayak.com, the Google Flight Matrix. I'll go to these websites to see if the dates are still on sale. Oh, okay. If that makes sense. So this is the information, and then this is Can my research my part. So, yeah. There's a power outlet, like a power strip right there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if any of you want this, this is just a little handout from the last one. <laughs> okay. So yeah. When my phone charges a little bit, I'm not trying to do it. Like, I'm yeah, click on sure. one of yours to see yeah, if I can actually do it. I've got it. my uh, laptop here, too. Oh, okay, because I want to see if sure. I can actually do it. Because, yeah, like, I'll I show didn't you. understand it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to find it. Where, yeah. Why is this ticket? Sure. I probably have and, to buy it soon because you said sometimes it's yeah, only two hours, right? Yeah, hours, and sometimes it's, it'll last three weeks. <laughs> like, when I got my ticket, I'm going to Morocco for Thanksgiving because I don't go home for Thanksgiving. It's too far and expensive. It was $600 round trip out of Las Vegas. And so my friend and I decided to go, and we booked tickets, and we're like, yes, and this is going to go up soon, and it's like still $600 two months later. Like, it's just the it's price that, random. yeah, the price that Iberia Airlines um, had set for this route, so, yeah. So it's, it's so totally random, there's no rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I'm, I don't know. If I'm a little bit like, so yeah. the only Thank countries you. that I've thought about going is mm-hmm. where I actually know somebody, right? Right, right. Because so, I don't know like where to stay or I would be like freaked out that right. I'm going to get robbed or yeah. Yeah, so it's murdered or kidnapped or adventure. ransom <laughs> or something, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, so uh, with the deals, it it's good ever. to have a list of places <laughs> that you want to go because sometimes you'll see a price and it's like, should I go or should I not? And it takes you a little bit longer to make that decision and that's, that means it's less likely that you'll get the The price. So if you have a list of places you want to go and you see that on sale, that helps your decision-making process for getting the actual sale, like before it's like So, but like, a lot, like when you go to a random country, where do you stay? Um, I usually, I have um, hotel points with credit cards. Uh So a lot of the credit cards, um, uh, like credit card hotel bonuses, are pretty high, like 60 to 80,000 points. It's a lot higher than the mileage um, credit cards. And sometimes they'll have special deals like on Intercontinental, so they do like Holiday Inn. Um, every two months they'll put like 50 hotels on sale for only 5,000 points. And they're, it's so you can't choose where you go, but if it happens to be a place that you're traveling to, that helps. 
But for 5,000 points, um, the credit card bonus will give you 80,000 points. So you can stretch that 80,000 like points pretty far if you're mm -hmm. going to these cheap like redemptions. What's, what's your favorite card to use? Um, so it used to be Club Carlson. So they own Radisson mm -hmm. and like the Park Inn and, and those types of hotels. Um, but they, on June 1st, they changed their rules. So I will no longer be using them. <laughs> so their benefit was. Like when you signed up, you got 80,000 points, and then when you book any hotel with points for more than two, like more than one night, this the last night is free. So you can book like two nights, and the second night's free. So you get two nights for the price of one, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I use that in like Iceland and Spain, uh, Cape Town. I I I booked like because it was ending before the deal ended. I booked some tickets for my parents to go to Orlando next year for their anniversary. So our hotel nights for them. So that's gone though. So sometimes they'll have deals like that. Um, other than that, I think Intercontinental was my favorite because every year they have, um, you pay the $50 annual fee after the first year, but you get a free hotel night at any of their hotels every year, just one night. So you can use that free night in like a $200 a night hotel, a $300 a night hotel, and that still works. So. So, so half the time I'll stay in hotels, but lately I've been traveling more by myself and I choose to stay in hostels because in a hostel you can meet other people that want to sure. do things and then you're not, you're not alone. So, yeah, and it's more social. And it's fun. I think. Yeah, and it's it so fun. cheap. It is fun. Yeah, yeah when and we were in El Salvador, we did stay a couple nights in a hostel with Ashley. I don't know if she told you. It's so <laughs> fun. Okay. Because yeah, we met like all these people that were like hostels. traveling all yeah, around. Yeah. And I've been in hostels in Germany. Yeah. We did get so, bitten by so, mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. So you have to check reviews. Hostelworld.com is the best website, I think, for checking the reviews and ratings and, and figuring out if it's a place you want to stay at. Hostels.com? Hostel a hostel world. Or world. Mm -hmm. Hostelworld.com. And you would stay anywhere, like even in a dangerous country? Um, yeah, I just went to Colombia by myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you went to? Ago, I was in Medellin, so. Yeah. Wow. And you just went to a hostel. Oh, yeah. Did you just take a yes, taxi to a hostel? hostel? Um, I took the train. They have a metro system. So So your main safe. your main um, well, travel form of travel is, is trains or um uh, when I get no, there sure um I don't know, it depends on the country and what infrastructure they have. If they have a, a metro, then that's usually the most efficient, like in Europe especially in some parts of South America. It's just amazing that you have no Asia. fear. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's well, you just have to do your research. Yeah. So Another I, good resource is Wiki Travel. Um, it's not Wikipedia, but it's like a Wikipedia for travel. And yeah. it tells you, it goes through all the information on like where to stay, what to do, how to get to the airport, or how to get to the city from the airport. Uh, the best places to visit as a tourist and the safest places to go like it has all the basic yeah. information so that's my number one research uh, resource for that kind of thing to figure out what's safe to do and what and not um, in Cape Town also they had uber and then they had their own version of uber that was cheaper oh, that's sweet. but it was like two dollars to what was it called um, let's see so it was uber we love uber I used Uber Uber, but then they have one called like. Is that a site? Um, it's an app. So Uber is this app where yeah, you see where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, U B E R. Sweet. The first time you use it, you can get twenty five dollar. Like, if you know someone that has Uber, you can get like the promo code, and you'll get twenty five dollars free on your first ride. It's like a taxi service. Um, yeah, so we, but it's better. It's based on your phone, so it pinpoints where you are, and you verify, yes, this is my address, and this is where I want to go. It gives you a price estimate and a time estimate, and then, the taxi will uh -huh, and then it tells you when the taxi arrives. Is it all over the world, or is it just Europe? Um, it's all over the world. It's here. My sister uses it in Linden to get to her job in Lehigh. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. And it's just basically a private yeah. person that shows up, Yeah, right? so the, people use their private cars, yeah, and it's amazing. I can't remember what the I deleted and it. For is my that phone. app? Exp uh, do you have to pay for oh, it? Oh no, it's free. It's, it's free. free. Yeah. To um, some countries yeah. have that. So let me do it. So then, so you have to have your location services on. Um, that's that's the other thing that I posted yeah. a couple weeks ago. Google is allowing their GPS system to be used if you don't have internet or Wi-Fi connection. So that will be amazing once that's all set up. I have to figure out how that works. But let me show you Uber. What's it? What's it called? 
Uber app. Oh, Uber, yeah. U B E R, the app. Um, I've used it in, I think I used it in uh, Abu Dhabi also. Yeah. Sometimes the, the, the taxi is cheaper. So it, it says exactly where we are, it has the address, and it says seven minutes till a car can get here. So it says that's where the closest car is. So if you set pickup location, um, request pickup here. Um, there's an option here to do fair estimate. So enter destination. So where would I want to go? To BYU. Just say from here to you. Really? The this is too center. cool. So you can even do it right here. Yeah, so and it's five to seven dollars. And it will tell you in another country uh -huh. how much, how many dollars it is, or it's going to be in their it's currency. It's going to be in their currency. But so do you first of all, like as soon as you get that, do you change your currency? Um, no, because I have credit cards that waive that, or they don't charge an international like foreign transaction fee. So oh, so that's what you recommend, maybe yeah. getting a credit card. Like which one would you yeah, recommend? Yeah, uh, well, most travel cards nowadays actually w um, don't have foreign transaction fees, so you just have to read the fine print. Because each bank also And you also can use that for Uber? Yeah, you can use it for Uber. You just attach any credit card you want to it. And you, the thing is, you never deal with the driver. Like, you don't have any monetary transaction with the driver. You just do it right app. here. Yeah. Nice. So it automatically charges it. You don't have to worry about tips because of that. But you can add a tip if you want. Um, yeah, so you don't have any interactions with money in the, in the car. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. See, I would be worried about yeah. that because I'm like, is that a mm -hmm. fair price? Yeah, and it says like actual fares may be slightly different based on traffic or discounts, but it's it's going to be between 5 to $7. So wait, right now if you chose this, it would tell you how much it is, whether it's 5 or 7 or 6 um, No, when you end, yeah. it depends on how long it took to get there. Oh, because there's, there's traffic or something. or something like that. But like when I was in Cape Town, actually, there was... Um, so the thing about Uber that's controversial is they do peak pricing where they charge you like double or extra if a lot of people want Uber and their drivers are busy. So they say, hey, if you want Uber right now, you're going to pay a premium to use it. So it'll tell you right now the fare is you know one and a half times or two times the usual rate. If you can wait maybe 15 minutes, the price will go back down to usual or down oh, to regular. Because there's a lot of yeah. people using it. So if you, it, it allows you to, to choose to wait or not, or to pay more to get a taxi when it's busy. So what so. phone service do you have? Sprint. Yeah. And so that's another thing that I I have here. So I haven't used it yet because I have to unlock my phone. But there's this um, SIM card sticker. This is called No Roaming, K-N-O-W, and it's just a sticker here, and you don't have to replace your SIM card when you travel ever, because you stick this to your SIM card, and there's this set of rules, and they email you a code that you have to have to activate it, but this tells you how to use it, and essentially what it is, is, um, it's not for Sprint, it's for any, any unlocked phone. You put it on your SIM card, and you can use it in any country, you just have to make sure you activate the settings with the country, and you purchase a number, a phone number in that country, and or if you want and it has a set rate so it's like three cents per minute if you call or something and so many cents per gigabyte so you take your own sim card out and you put that in um no you put this on top of your, your sim, SIM card. card it's a sticker like it's literally just a sticker on your sim card it's a cloaking device <laughs> yeah essentially but you have to change the settings on your phone like according to you the direction for each country yeah yeah That's or so yeah familiar. And Obviously. there's a different rate, but it's a set standard rate, and you can just add money to the the SIM card online. So it's really simple, and this is and that way you have a phone in another way. country. Yeah. Without the roaming charge. Uh huh. And if you're going to a lot of places for short periods of time, this is cheaper than buying a new SIM card, an activation fee, or a new phone. If you're like doing a study abroad. No roaming. Oh, yeah. So you can just read the reviews about it online. Yeah, but that That's this is super, super useful. I haven't unlocked my phone yet because Sprint is really touchy about yeah. that. But they wait. So you have to unlock it. What yeah. Does that mean? So that means you have to call your phone service and say, "Hey, I need my phone to be able to be compatible with other SIM cards." So they, well, they, they, they flip a switch. Yeah. Some companies make you charge Sometimes you money. Sometimes it's a matter of taking your phone in. It just depends who you have. Yeah. But if you talk to your phone provider about some people call it jailbreaking a phone. It depends. But some, but what they'll do is, what they'll do whatever they need to, whether it be flipping a switch or something on your phone in the card, so that it's it's like unlocked and open to. And then can you lock it? Service. Then you lock it when you come back. No, once it's no. unlocked, it's unlocked. Which means you can use it on any phone service. Like when you go out of the country, even though you have a Sprint phone, you'll be on like telecom something or whatever. And they will let Virgin you do, Mobile. I thought they wouldn't let you do yeah. that. Um, you have to get permission, so that's why it's called unlocking. So, 
-hmm. But they have to give you permission or no? No, they don't. But for um, some providers, you can just go therapy. get it done from someone who knows what they're right. Like they, Verizon, you, all it is, you call them and say, "Hey, I want to unlock my phone." And they say, "Okay, click, click, click. It's unlocked." Verizon is the easiest to use for that. But, um, Sprint is a little more tricky, but they changed the federal law a couple months ago where they can't deny you to unlock your phone, oh, but really? they, cool. they can charge still charge you. you. So it's, okay. it's different, yeah, for each. So this yeah. this sticker, no, no it, roaming? It, it can go on top of any SIM card? Yes. Any provider? Cool. Uh -huh. so you don't but have it has to be phone. on an unlocked phone. Uh -huh. So you just change the settings on your phone, which is a Do lot simpler. Do you keep it on like once it's on your SIM card? Do you yeah, always you just have always it? have it on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you don't take it back home. No, no, it's just there. So but it's then inactive. When you come back, you change the settings back and then it's inactive. So, got it mm -hmm. so it's really really nice although like the phone companies are moving toward just having phone service in other countries like sprint actually allows free international roaming in like 25 countries now including mm -hmm. panama so i'll try that when i'm there um they'll still charge you like 20 cents a minute yeah that's the app yeah if you want i can give you my code <laughs> yeah. so you can get 25 dollars yeah sure and then i'll get like 10 Good. With, yeah. with Uber? Yeah. Oh, we were going to give her our code. Sorry. Just oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, we actually right. use Uber so for the first time. So you are Uber driver? No, we just no. ride. We're riders. Oh. So, it's so like the drivers and drivers. My friend's husband's a driver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyone can be a driver. Well, not anyone but like people. You have to pass the driver's license. Yeah. 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 Yeah.